Hey guys, my sim rig is worth more than the shed I live in, boy here, and welcome back to another video. As you've probably guessed from the change of mic, today I'm going to be doing a bit of a talky video. The subject of this video is my OSW Direct Drive wheel. I've had the wheel for about a year now, so I think it's a good time to talk about my experiences, the pros and cons, and whether I'd recommend a direct drive wheel to someone who is maybe looking to buy one. In the background is some footage of me just using the wheel to give your eyes something to look at while your ears have to put up with the lispy mess that is my voice. Get wrecked ears. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over what a direct drive wheel is and what makes it special, what makes it desirable. But by doing that, I'm first of all going to talk about other wheels, about consumer grade wheels. When I say consumer grade wheels, I mean wheels like the Logitech G29, the Thrustmaster T300, and of course the Club Sport and CSL Elite series from Fanatec. There's a reason why people have these wheels. First of all, they're fairly cheap, uh, well Logitech ones are anyway, and they're of a decent quality. If you look at stuff like Fanatec as well, there are a wide range of different wheel rims you can use for pretty much every occasion. And really you can customize something for yourself while staying within a reasonable kind of budget. These kind of wheels are not direct drive. Logitech wheels, for example, are gear driven, which you'll probably know if you own one, that very identifiable clacking noise as you go around the corner of the gears sort of pushing against you. And Thrustmaster wheels, most of them anyway, and Fanatec wheels are belt driven, meaning you get a smoother force feedback than you would with the Logitech gear system, but ultimately you still lose a little bit of detail, a little bit of power from the motor to the belt to your wheel. With a direct drive system, the steering wheel is connected directly to the motor shaft, meaning that you get every little bit of detail and strength that that motor can offer you. Because the direct drive wheel doesn't have gears or belts, it requires a bigger motor, which brings us on nicely to our first sort of point of discussion, which is price, and probably the first thing people think about when a direct drive wheel is mentioned. Now, I have an OSW from SimuCube, and that's towards the bottom end of the direct drive price range. Uh, even that, however, just for the base, cost me 12 hundred pounds no wheel no pedals no shifter no quick release no nothing just the base 1200 pounds a lot of money in fact this is double the cost of a decent fanatec setup or a complete thrustmaster setup but as i said this is a bottom range direct drive wheel there are wheels like the bodnar wheel the bodnar sim steering base which cost upwards of three thousand pounds absolutely insane money obviously this is super expensive and way out of the price range i'd say of the average sim racing enthusiast the only reason that i can justify having something like this is because the channel that you're watching right now is my job i i guess i'm a professional sim racer so having the best gear i think helps me do a better job However, that's not where it ends. As I mentioned, it's highly recommended to get a quick release, which is about another £100, and an actual wheel rim that will fit on that quick release, which again is another £100. And on top of that, you will need, and I mean need, a very rigid rig to hold the power of the wheel. Your standard wheel stand or desk will be shaken apart by the force of the wheel, so you really need to get something that can hold up to the amount of power the wheel is able to produce. The rig I use, for example, the Schussenfeld rig, is another £1,200, so with that we're already well above £2,500, and we don't even have a set of pedals or a shifter yet. So in short, yeah, it's pretty pricey. But there is a reason for this price. The motor on my direct drive wheel is capable of a peak output of 30 newton meters of torque. Originally, it was designed to move industrial conveyor belts. So as you can imagine, it's got a fair bit of grunt to it. Now, realistically, the peak torque is limited to 28 newton meters by the electronics it uses. But still, let's put that force into some kind of context. This motor has 10 times the strength of your average G27 wheel, whilst being four times as powerful as the strongest Fanatec wheel. Absolutely insane power. In fact, it's so powerful that it comes with an emergency stop button, which is actually recommended to be placed by your feet 
in case the wheel breaks your hands and or wrists. I mean, that's pretty scary. And on the subject of strength, this might sound a little bit silly, but I've noticed a increase, a clear increase in the definition and strength of my shoulders since using this wheel. This thing makes you a swole boy. The detail of the four seat back itself is just unmatched across any of the other wheels I've used in my experience as a sim racer. As I mentioned before, because the wheel is directly connected to the motor shaft, there is no loss of detail and you can feel every little bump, every change in the road surface, and more importantly, you are able to react to it. The wheel allows you to feel subtle movement in the tires, helping you predict things like understeer and oversteer, knowing where you're pushing a tire too hard and where you can maybe save for a bit of tire wear. It's something you really have to feel for yourself to understand. There have been many occasions where I've had scary moments in sim that I feel I wouldn't have been able to catch or correct with a consumer grade wheel. Everything just feels natural and alongside that when you're using VR the level of immersion is just off the chart. Whether this wheel would make you a faster driver is another subject altogether. I personally think that the wheel doesn't make me faster but it makes me more consistent. So take away from that what you will. Of course, as you can imagine, having a wheel of this strength and this detail isn't the easiest thing to set up. In fact, it's far from plug and play. I'd say in total, it took me about two weeks to get used to how the wheel worked, how to set it up properly, and how to dial it into the settings that I was most happy with. The wheel comes with two pieces of software that you have to somewhat learn to get it to work, and the ones that I've been using anyway are EMOS and Granity. EMOS is sort of a more general program to get the, uh, the wheel up and running in the sim, whereas Granity is used to really fine-tune the force feedback settings, and you can really spend hours in there if you, if you want to. And of course, it not being a consumer grade wheel, there aren't really many places online you can go for resources to learn and understand the programs you need to use with it. Luckily, Tomo over at Sim Racing Bay was really helpful with me and helped me get my wheel set up properly. But even once we had the wheel set up properly, I still suffered with EMI, electromagnetic interference. If you don't ground your wheel properly, EMI will pretty much ruin your rig, make it nearly unusable. I mean, for example, for me, even though now my wheel is grounded properly, before my pedals would randomly spike without any input from me or they would hold an input for longer than I would. So for example, I'd be on the throttle and then get off the throttle. The throttle would then stay and I'd go flying off the course. And buttons on my steering wheel would, would just activate randomly or not activate at all. So if you don't have the wheel grounded properly, it can really mess up your experience. So I guess that brings us very nicely to the last part of the video, which is a simple question. Would I recommend this after owning it for a year? If you're an average sim racer, I'd probably say no. The reason being primarily costs involved and everything you need to get it working. It's not a consumer piece of kit. It requires a little bit of knowledge that I had to sort of pick up along the way. And you can get a decent Fanatec or decent Thrustmaster set up for half the price it would cost to get a full set up for one of these. And you'll be just as fast as someone with an OSW. But to the enthusiast who is looking to further their experience and maybe get just a little bit closer to the real life feel, then I would 100% recommend a direct drive wheel. I cannot imagine going back to a consumer grade wheel now. And that's not to say anything bad against consumer grade wheels. There is just such a gap between those and a direct drive wheel. For example, I have a CSL Elite as a backup wheel. And whilst I think it was vastly superior to the old T500 I used to use, comparing it to a direct drive wheel would just not be fair to the CSL wheel at all. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I know it's a bit different from my usual drivey, shouty, crashy content, but sometimes I like to do videos like this. If you found the video informative at all or enjoyed it, then please hit that like button. And of course, if you really enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon. That way you get notified of whenever I go live on stream or put up a new video. If you have any questions about the direct drive system that I use and I didn't quite answer the question you have in the video, feel free to pop it in the comments below and I will do my best to answer it. Take care, have an awesome day, and I'll see you guys next time.